Welcome back to the channel everyone, and if you're new here, welcome. This episode we're going to look at how to size your wires and your fuses for your electrical system in your van or camper van. And that will enable you to know whether or not to use a wire like this, or one like this. Now keep in mind, neither of us are electricians. We do have a background in physics, so we understand electrics, but if you don't feel confident installing any of this, then please get a professional. There's two things we're going to be looking at how to size in this video, your wires and your fuses. And the reason this is really important to get correct is because if you don't size these right, then your wires can overheat and even start an electrical fire in your vehicle. In order to work out the size of fuse and the size of wire you're going to need, the first thing you're going to need to know is how much current the appliance that you're using is going to draw. Now most 12 volt appliances will just give you a current rating somewhere in the manual or somewhere on the box, but some give you a wattage, which is the power rating instead, but don't worry, there's a simple equation to convert from that to the current. So if you haven't seen this equation before, it looks a little bit like this, where we have the power equal to the current times by the voltage. Now power is measured in watts, current is measured in amps and voltage is measured rather helpfully in volts. There is an easy way to remember this equation and it's by drawing this little triangle here and I'm going to pop power up in the top section and then current and voltage down in the two bottom ones. Now, all we have to do is cover the value that we're looking for, so in this instance power, and then you can see the triangle shows us that we need to multiply the current by the voltage to get the value for power. This also works for the others, so for current we end up with power over voltage, aka power divided by voltage, and of course this also works for the voltage, where we end up with power divided by the current. And as you can see, this is just a really simple visual way to remember this equation. Bear in mind that if you're going to wire multiple appliances together in parallel, that that will add those currents together and therefore you may end up needing a larger fuse or a larger wire size. And this is especially common in lighting circuits where you may want multiple lights done off of a single switch. Once you've got the current for your appliance or the appliances you're running off your circuit, the next thing you can do is work out the size of fuse. Now, there's a rule for doing this. Generally, you multiply that current rating for your appliance by 1.25 to get the current rating for your fuse. And if it doesn't line up exactly with the fuse size, then you just go up to the next fuse size. The reason you do this and don't match it exactly is because otherwise your fuse could blow annoyingly often. It's really important to remember at this point that the fuse is there to protect the wire. And so whatever wire size you then go on to choose, it needs to be able to carry more current than that fuse rating. And so in the event that the appliance short circuits or produces more current than it says it will, that fuse will blow first before the wire can overheat and catch fire. Rather helpfully, most caravan and motorhome stores will tell you the amp rating of the wire. And if you're in any doubt between two sizes, go for the bigger size. The type of cable that you choose is also really important in a moving vehicle. So a solid core cable, with all those vibrations over time, that solid core can weaken and break or snap. And so what you really need is a multi-stranded cable. And the default in most moving vehicles nowadays is what's called thin wall cable. In our conversion, we've gone for a twin core thin wall cable. So the positive and the negative cable are both right next to each other inside the casing. So in this example, we have a fridge running at 48 watts. Now, the first thing we need to do in order to work out the fuse and wire size for this is to convert that wattage into a current. And we could do this using the handy equation we saw earlier. So we take that power of 48 watts and divide it by our voltage. Let's say that's 12 volt DC, which will give us four amps of current in this circuit. To work out the fuse size, we simply multiply it by that 1.25 to give us a 5 amp fuse, which means we can use a wire with a rating greater than 5 amps. Remember, it is perfectly safe to upsize your wire, 
The only downsides of doing so are that it's going to cost you a little bit more and also take up a little bit more space. In the second example, we have the same parallel circuit of LED lights we saw earlier, which has a total circuit current of 0.6 amps. To work out the fuse, we multiply that by 1.25 to give us 0.75 amps. Now, because this number doesn't line up with an exact fuse, we're going to round it up to give us a fuse size of 1 amp, which means we can use a wire that is rated to anything greater than 1 amp. Unfortunately, even after you have all of that worked out, it's not quite the end of the story because of this annoying thing called voltage drop. This occurs because wires have natural resistance in them, and this resistance means that some volts are lost as they travel through the wire. Voltage drop can affect the appliances that you're trying to run, and it's especially important in a van conversion or motorhome because you're normally running quite a low voltage, so often you'll be running a 12 volt electrical system. There are equations out there to work out the voltage drop and you want to keep it between 3 to 4% at a maximum. But these equations are slightly more complicated and so we'll make sure we link a voltage drop calculator in the description below. So, you've used a voltage drop calculator and found out that your voltage drop is above that 3 to 4% range. Don't worry, there are a few things you can do to solve this. Number one is shorten your cable run. Now, this isn't always practical in a van conversion, but have a look and see if there's a shorter distance that you can run your wire. Option two is to reduce the current that you're running through the cable. So perhaps you're running four or five lights on one circuit. You could potentially split this out into multiple different circuits and reduce the amount of current going through that wire. Option number three is to size up your wire. Chunkier wires have lower resistance. And option four, if you're finding that you're regularly exceeding that three to 4% voltage drop, perhaps you're in a larger vehicle like a bus. Or a truck. Yeah, exactly. Then you could increase the starting voltage by increasing it from 12 volts to perhaps 24 volts or even 48 volts if you're gonna have to do some really long cable runs. You can achieve this simply by buying batteries that run at 24 or 48 volts, or because in a series circuit, you add the voltages together you can get several 12 volt batteries and connect them together in series. Hopefully you found this video useful and now know how to size the wires and the fuses for the electrical system in your van. We will be putting out a video on how to size your battery and solar system. So if you have any questions or there's anything we didn't cover, let us know in the comments down below and we'll do our best to answer them or include it in the next video.